On September 4th, I woke up in the morning to an email from YouTube telling us about the settlement with FTC and that major changes were coming for monetization. I'm no longer practicing actively as an attorney, but I used to be a civil litigator, and so I wanted to learn everything I could about what was going on. I started reading the complaint by the FTC against YouTube and the stipulated order that represented the settlement. I was reviewing COPPA and the legislative history. In addition to reviewing all these materials, I've been able to meet with YouTube, I've been able to meet with the FTC several times. And the purpose of this video is to share what I learned. First, I do believe that this regulation is gonna cause more harm than good for kids. Second, creators need to know that this could impact a lot more of us than just kids' channels. And third, there is something we can do. We can send comments to the FTC and invite our viewers to do the same to give feedback about our concerns. So back in 2013, the FTC took comments from the public and they were reviewing their enforcement and regulation of COPPA and they made some serious changes. Once again, they're reconsidering COPPA, they're taking comments, and they're considering expanding its regulation. For example, right now, the definition of child directed, they're considering to expand to also include child attractive content. So that would mean that not just kids channels are turning off personalized ads on YouTube, but any videos that a lot of kids under 13 like to watch could face that risk of needing to turn off their personalized ads. And again, this includes a lot of what's on YouTube because kids like watching a lot of stuff. And we face big penalties if we don't comply with COPPA. It's up to $42,000 per video. When I met with the FTC, I was surprised how little they knew about what was going on for YouTube creators. I almost felt like there should be a requirement that the FTC needed to all have an account, try to do advertising on YouTube, watch and become a part of a community and create content before they have the power to completely shut down what's going on. But really that's the power of the comments is that we're able to educate the FTC and let them know all those details so that they can make the most educated decisions weighing all the factors. This is a complex issue, so I'll just apologize up front. It's not going to be the most entertaining video, but I hope that it will be informative on the topics that matter. All right, let's start with the FTC, right? This is the Federal Trade Commission, and they have been given the charge to regulate and enforce COPPA. COPPA was enacted back in 1998, and its primary purpose was to protect children's personal information online. So before a kid would give their email, phone number, social security number online, a parent would have to be notified and give consent for that information to go out or be used. Legislators didn't want sex offenders or others to be able to contact children and harm them. Major changes came in 2013 when the FTC amended definitions and enforcement of the COPPA rule. It was the changes back in 2013 that made it possible for creators like us to be held strictly liable under COPPA and that made personalized ads an issue. So right now, as the FTC is asking for comments about the regulation of COPPA, they've asked specifically about the 2013 changes and what the impact has been of this and whether this was a good change. This is one of those areas where we can give specific feedback about the concerns of those changes and how they will impact kids in a negative way. Let's talk real quick about the difference between personalized ads and contextualized ads and why that makes a difference as it relates to COPPA. A personalized ad is based on a user's online activities. So for example, YouTube can look at a user's viewing history and then match up ads to send them that align with their interests. That's how we make most of our money from YouTube. YouTube puts personalized ads on the content and then it splits the ad revenue with creators. By removing personalized ads from child-directed content, YouTube has said that this will have a significant business impact on creators. A contextualized ad is based on just what the viewer is watching at that time. This is more like a TV commercial where ads are placed on a specific TV show. So under COPPA, they're saying personalized ads are not okay being placed in front of kids without notification and consent to parents. Contextualized ads are okay being used for children even without consent. So how does this apply to YouTube? Parents can use the YouTube Kids app to set up profiles for their kids under 13 and there aren't personalized ads shown on YouTube Kids. YouTube has also attempted to protect themselves by saying users are only allowed to sign up for YouTube if they're 13 and older. But as we all know, parents buy devices and then they hand them to their kids to watch YouTube. One poll said that 81% of parents knowingly let their children under 13 watch YouTube. Although users claim that they're 13 and up, the FTC is saying, we're gonna just look at the content itself to determine whether or not personalized ads should be run. And that's how we got where we are today, where we're gonna be asked as creators coming up into the end of this year to go through each of our videos and designate whether they are child-directed or not. 
If we do click on that box and say that it is child directed, then we will have personalized ads shut off and we will have limitations on what we can do with our videos. If we fail to click on that box and the FTC comes in later and does their sweep of enforcement, that's where we could begin facing our lawsuit against us personally and seeing those kinds of fines of up to $42,000 per video that we misdesignated. Now this has raised a concern because the definition of child directed is unclear. There is no bright line rule, there's just a 10 factor test that the FTC FTC laid out. The problem is that creators and even experts don't know how to define each of these factors or how to weigh them appropriately. I'm going to make a separate video that goes into a lot more detail about the definition of child directed, my concerns about it being unconstitutionally vague, and just demonstrating how big of a challenge this is for creators. I mean, I have over 1,300 videos and over 200 hours of content, and I really am going to have to go through each video and decide whether it is child directed or not. So as I said at the beginning of the video, my concern is that this regulation does more harm than good. So here's the protection that is provided to children. So when kids are watching videos on YouTube that are designated as child directed, they will get contextualized ads. So either way, the kids are gonna be seeing ads and the ads may be similar or the same as what they were watching before with the personalized ads. Whenever kids are on YouTube and they're watching content that isn't designated as child-directed, they will still be seeing personalized ads just as before. And again, we know that a lot of what children are watching on YouTube is content that won't be designated as child-directed. While the FTC is concerned about the privacy issues around personalized ads, it doesn't appear that parents feel that big of a concern about it. And the intent of COPPA wasn't to make parenting decisions for parents. It was to put parents in control. I'm concerned that the regulation doesn't consider the responsibility of the parents. Parents knowingly hand the device to their child to watch on their account. This sounds a lot like consent to me. And penalizing creators who make content for children isn't the right solution. The best solution is for parents to learn about and choose to use the YouTube Kids app it keeps parents in control and keeps off the personalized ads. And if parents don't want advertising at all on YouTube, they can use YouTube Premium. The law was supposed to put parents in control, but the way the FTC is regulating this is actually removing parents from the equation, at least as it relates to these personalized ads. I think a lot of parents don't consider personalized ads as a violation of their children's privacy. I mean, as content creators, we don't have any access to that information in a way that will allow us to contact their children or harm them. Rather, I think a lot of parents would agree that personalized ads actually provide some benefits. It also is the means that allows for free entertainment. I'm a father of five kids, and I'm not saying that I don't care about children's privacy or protecting their safety. I do care about those things. I really don't think that these regulations are actually providing a significant amount of protection for children. So now you consider the harm that is gonna be coming from this regulation. It's gonna encourage less good, innovative, creative, quality content for children, and it's gonna encourage more mature, inappropriate content. See, businesses are now incentivized to level up or make more mature content. These are things that would provide protection for the creator against the regulation. And so creators are needing evidence to be able to point out that they're not child-directed. So adding swear words, more mature themes and content, maybe having more aggressive and violent video games that they're playing, just as an example, are evidences that they could use as creators to say, look, I'm not child-directed. The problem though is that kids are still gonna be watching this content anyway. Large corporations will probably be able to still make content on YouTube because they don't depend on ad revenue. Full-time creators who wanna make great content for kids are gonna get hit hard by this because they do rely on that ad revenue. So here's just an example of how quality content will begin to shrink. Our family has been doing family vlogs for the last five years. We decided that we wanted to make a channel specifically for kids. We wanted to entertain, inspire, and educate children with our videos. So we already had a logo and had made several videos when this announcement came out on September 4th. At that time, we decided to shut down production of our kids' channel. It didn't make sense for us to go forward with all the new risk and uncertainty, the potential penalties, and I know that we're not alone in that. I've talked to several other creators that are also closing down their production of quality kids' channels. What's sad is that this is gonna extend into the future. People who may have had the desire or the incentive to make great content for kids will now choose to do other things because of all the uncertainty, risk, and penalties associated with doing that now. One of the really cool things about YouTube is its diversity, and unique voices are able to get out and impact children for good. Right now, there's communities built around all different types of 
special needs or conditions or faith or family values or LGBT and minority groups. These types of audiences will suffer if personalized or shut off on content directed to children that were speaking out about these issues. I know for us, we shared in our vlogs about Elise struggling with dyslexia, or when Caleb found out he had celiac disease. And we got hundreds of responses from families saying, my kid is struggling with that too, and they really appreciated us talking about it and building a community around those issues. I think another unintended consequence of this regulation is that kids' channels that are gonna try to survive this storm are more likely to increase their brand deals in their content to try to make up for lost revenue from personalized ads getting shut off. So with all this said, what can we do about it? Number one, share this video with creators. Number two, write a comment to the FTC. Number three, invite your viewers to write a comment to the FTC. And number four, add your name to the petition and invite your viewers to do the same. I'm really grateful that the FTC uses this democratic type process to say, hey, we want to hear from the public on this issue. Right now, there have been really loud voices on the child advocacy side. And again, you have to know that there's a lot of lobbyists that are competitors with YouTube who are very happy about this regulation. This regulation pulls the rug out from under the main competitive advantage that YouTube had in advertising. There have been little to no voices, especially in the media, that have come out and talked about our side of the story, or the concerns related to the regulation, or the ways that it may harm children. This is really why I'm making these videos and wanting to talk about it, is to educate and to raise awareness that there is another side of the story. And it's not that just as creators we're concerned about losing our businesses, but we also are concerned about the impact this will have on children. If you want to learn more about what the advocacy groups are saying and the people who are supporting this regulation, I'll put links in the description box where you can read their side of the story. If you want to learn more, I have additional videos talking about COPPA, the FTC, and YouTube. Thanks so much for watching and sharing.